Uh, Max, do you mind introducing yourself a little bit and why you took CS50 in the first place? Yeah, definitely. So my name is Max Jones. I'm a junior here living in Adam's house. Um, I concentrate in developmental and regenerative biology. Mm -hmm. And this year I really wanted to take CS just for fun. Um, it was a field that I haven't taken at Harvard or really in my life. Um, and I just saw CS50 as an opportunity to just learn something new. Um, and really enjoyed it, so I'm glad I did. Very good, I'm glad to hear that. So do you mind telling us a bit about your final project? Yeah, definitely. So my final project is called Adams Learning. Um, it's for an elementary school in East Boston called Adams Elementary. Um, I worked there this semester through a uh, class called Spanish 59, Spanish mm -hmm. in the Community, and the school has about 10% ENL students, which is English New Language. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to make a language learning website for those students, um, and I wanted to give the teachers the ability to create lessons that the students could then engage with. Um, so through the website, the students are speaking English, um, they're also listening to English and getting validation that they're pronouncing words correctly and things like that. Fantastic. And then the teachers have direct input. Do you mind showing us a demo? Yeah, definitely. Of it? So if we go here, um, we have the home page. I'm signed in as a teacher so I can edit and delete things, but usually students would just be able to play the actual lessons. So I'll go here and I'll hit play, um, and then we're brought to an actual lesson. Um, so if you go ahead and you click answer, it's going to tell you what the correct answer is. Um, so welcome to computer science. So this lesson here is just CS50. Decided to make some CS50 themed <laughs> slides here. Uh, so here it said, "Welcome to computer science." So the idea is the student would see the slide, click answer, listen to it, okay. um, and then go ahead and start selecting their sentence. So from here they'd say, "Welcome to computer science." And then from here, they have the ability to record themselves. Um, so you'd go ahead, you'd record yourself saying the sentence, and then compare the recording of yourself saying the sentence to how it's supposed to be recorded so you can hear your own pronunciation um, and see your progress and things like that. Um, yeah, so if we go ahead, it's pretty easy to create slides, but we'll go ahead and do the next one. Here we speak to ducks. So it Even says I here, didn't do that one. yeah, this <laughs> one's running pretty fast. It's also pretty loud in here. Mm -hmm. um, and this one says here we speak to ducks, because in CS50 to resolve our problem, yeah, yep. we do speak to rubber ducks. So here we speak to ducks. And then if we go ahead and complete it, uh, this one is we also have a hackathon. We <laughs> also have a hackathon. Nice. And then now that we've completed all of them, we can hit complete. Um, or go back through and listen to all of our recordings if we had done and those. Um, and then the student hits complete, and then they have the ability to go ahead and play the rest of the lessons. Okay, nice. And you mentioned that teachers will be able to easily create lessons. Can we see a little bit of that? Too? Yeah, definitely. So if we go here and we say create a slide, mm -hmm. um, the teacher can add it to whatever lesson that they want to create the slide within. And then they can go ahead and select an image. So I have one on here called football. I think it's just kids playing football. Mm -hmm. um, so we can go here and, and we'll call it the kids are playing football. And that's the correct answer. Mm -hmm. And then from here, the teachers would go in and input all the different parts of speech. Um, I had a meeting with the speech therapist and with the ENL teacher, mm -hmm. and they specifically wanted to break it down by parts of speech mm -hmm. um, and then color code it. So if we go back to the buttons, the, buller, the buttons are actually color coded by part of speech. Mm -hmm. um, so that way uh, the students are relating different parts of speech um, with the actual colors and kind of picking up on those things as they play the game more and more. Um, but I won't input all the parts of speech um, just for time's <laughs> sake, and I'll just say the kids are playing football. Okay. So we have the right answer in here. Um, so then if we hit create, it'll create it. And then if we go back and actually play it again, we'll see that our last one is the kids here playing football. Um, so it's really dependent upon the teachers to go ahead and make lessons about whatever they want. Um, and that was one of the features that the teachers at the school really wanted, uh, was the ability to edit the lessons, delete the lessons, create them, um, and really make it tailored towards their students and what they were teaching. That's so great. And you said this is something that's going to actually be implemented in the school? Yeah, so I'm going to make it a little bit more visually appealing. <laughs> uh, appealing. Right now there's a lot of white space. Um, but yeah, so in the coming weeks I plan on um, putting on its own server and then giving it nice. to the school. Yeah. And don't beat yourself up about the design. I think the hardest part of web design is um, how it looks. You can have all the code and then it just looks horrible. But this is so amazing. And um, when I saw it at the Hackathon, I definitely wanted everyone else to be able to see it. So thank you for telling us about yeah, your project. Of course. Yeah.